Hello YouTube, this is Charlie426 and today we have the review of the HG Dari Balde from the Witch from Mercury series. Now once again, this is one of the two units that I have been really looking forward for as a kid uh, and it's finally released in Korea. Now I believe in Japan it released like one or two weeks ago, so I am a little bit late to the party, but I actually really wanted to try this kit out because uh, of all the one of the designs of the mobile suits that has been revealed from the series, this still takes uh, my number one spot for now. Uh, there is another unit that I'm really looking forward for. No, it's not the Demi Trainer, but I did purchase the Demi Trainer. Uh, all right, so let's see what we got. So first of all, um, I'm pretty sure anybody who's been watching this series should know who this was piloted by, and this one definitely has some interesting a uh, aspects in, in terms of technology for those who've seen the battle theme as well. All right, so as usual, let's go over the components. So first of all, what you get, of course, is obviously the mobile suit itself. I really love the red color going on here. I, I do like these a bit of a chunkiness that's going on to the legs and body, and like the unique you know setup here with the shields and the, these parts on the backwards for the, on the back. Who haven't seen for those who haven't seen the series, I will explain what these are and what these do. Uh, other than that, so here is what you're supposed to get in terms of components. So uh, I would like to mention there are no leftover parts technically. Uh, and then number two, there, this kit does not use any polycaps at all. For those who don't know, Bandai has been working for a long time to reduce or uh, or just not use polycaps for a long time because polycaps, while the ones made by Bandai are very well made and they do last the longest as far as I know, um, they will eventually rip. So if you bought a kit that uses polycaps, maybe 10 years or 20 years later, the polycap may get damaged or ripped eventually. So uh, in order to avoid that, I guess Bandai is really working uh, working their way to utilize kits that doesn't have any polycaps. So uh, here, number one, you do get two wires. So for those who don't know, uh, the this unit actually has a claw like claw uh, firing gimmick uh, from the feet. So this, which is why we have some wire action going on here as well. And we get these two parts now. In the in, in the regular mobile suit form, you don't really use these. Uh, use these. So these could be considered like leftover parts, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but once again, if you want to use a claw feet, this is what you use on the feet as well. So I'll be demonstrating that later. And then you do get a clear, a simple action base. The clear parts, this is the, you know, separate these three, uh, four pieces and you can make the action base very fast. So they do give you these. Uh, you do get two beam saver effect parts. For those who don't, obviously they should give these and they're in these uh, purple colors. Once again, kind of uncommon, so this is actually pretty good. Uh, as well and then you get a open left style hand so that's always uh, open style hands are always welcome and you get the main weapon the the beam spear now uh, to be fair you can actually separate these two units uh, these two as well so they, these can be used uh, separately so this is I believe is a beam kunai and then this is the beam anchor although I'm not sure if there's a full name when combined like this but still I do like the weapon and in the anime they they use this weapon very well so that's that and uh, here is the circuit sheet. Now it may look like a lot, but technically it's not much. So number one, this is the obviously the eye, and then the rest you have to choose. So you're using technically half of what you what you've given. So you have these black ones, and then you have these ones I use, which are basically the the black ones with the uh, green lines on this. So you can see here, you can see those green lines. So this is actually indicating where the AI system is activating, and he's trying to use his drones, um, which is pretty much his body parts. So you have to pr practically choose as well. And the good part is that any part that uses that sticker other than the, on the shields, they all, they all cover up with a clear, not just a purely clear uh, part, but a slightly dark clear plastic uh, to cover them up. So the stickers will get protected for the long run. All right, let me get rid of the spinning base and let's see what we got. All right, so once again, I do really love the color scheme and overall design here. This, uh, the moment I saw this unit, it was definitely my favorite for the first time. Uh, Alright, so uh, let's start with the head. Now the head, I really like the design here. It's a very uncommon silhouette other than the, you know, the antenna or horn. But the, even the horn is in a curved design. So that's something pretty, you know, we don't see too often. Now the eye stickers, I do, I mean the eye stickers was pretty easy to apply, but I kind of almost messed it up on the process because uh, I was touching it in the wrong way. But still, uh, the eyes, it, technically now this while it is a sticker but the on the inside there is a yellow separate piece so you could technically color that piece for those who don't want to use the sticker at all so once again i did mention that this thing does not use any polycap so any joints you see are all in plastic so once again 
Uh, despite that, the head can go down and up that much pretty well, so no big deal. Going 360 should be no problem as well. Uh, and yeah, uh, once again, I really like the way how this how this design turned out. I mean, it, it's like a visor, but at the same time, more, more of a sensor type design, if you ask me. All right, so uh, let's look at the uh, main the joints here first. So once again, uh, similar to the previous kits we've seen before, so the inside joint that connects the arm ball joint is that there, there's a ball joint on the joint here and it's facing forward right over here. That's the only connection here, so which is why it allows you to move outwards like that and also allows you to go upwards like that. So you do get the basic, well not exactly basic, but you get the typical range of the Witch for Mercury mold suit uh, joint. So you do get that. And because this is on a ball joint, obviously 360 is possible. Uh, and then the shoulders can go more than 90 degrees if you want to do so. Okay, and then, uh, give me a moment, okay, there we go. And then you can 360 spin the arm itself. Joint-wise, you do get a nice, uh, you do get a nice bend on going on here as well. And hands are your typical ball-jointed hands going on here. And uh, speaking of shield, the shield is just on the peg, so rotating them is also possible. And you can see there is, uh, I'm not sure why my camera is having so much trouble today. You can see there is a joint on the shield connector there, so which is why you can go upward, up and down as well, up and down, and you can also move the shield for, uh, forward like that or backwards. And you know you can pop them off if you want to do so. Now technically the drones I mentioned is overall, any part that you see this area is uh, technically has a part of a drone in it. So you can see for this guy, I'll, I'll explain the shoulders later. Uh, well, it's also meaning that the AI system is activating. For those who don't know, when this unit was, um, revealed in the anime this was not only not only was the pilot using his own skills but uh there is like a combat ai attached to this unit oops sorry about that and the the ai can actually fight on his own as well uh, depending on the situation so in the mid battle the ai was practically fighting the unit uh, on his own at the same time but once again uh, these drones i was mentioning is that these parts like certain parts can actually detach from the unit and then float on its own like like funnels basically so you can actually uh, protect himself uh, wirelessly like this and then you know fight around uh and regarding the arms the arm itself the lower arm to be more specific is can be a drone as well so you can actually pop the arm off you can see uh unlike more recent uh recent kits these actually have a a peg joint here so the arms would actually fly around, it can fly around on its own. Now you might be wondering why is that helpful? Is that, for example, uh, another example in the anime was that these could actually carry the weapon and then fly on its own and then start, you know, stabbing or actually tackling on the side to slice them. So that is the main tactic uh, or main, you know, gimmick of this unit. And uh, for those who don't know, this, these ones on the back are also arms, but instead of having hands, oops, now the way how they connect, they use these joints, so, and these joints has to, has to pop out together with the arm, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then you can attach these onto the arm as well. So these things can actually fl float on their own at the same time, but you can also attach this, and this is where the beam sabers go. So for example, it's, it's a bit stiff connection, but they all connect and they can use it like this, or the arm can float around and, you know, use the beam savers on its own at the same time. So it's definitely has some interesting aspects that we don't see too common in the Gundam or Universal Century universe. All right, other than that, the, uh, the rest is pretty much plain. Uh, regarding the body, you do get a nice ab crunch, actually a very stable ab crunch, and then 360 on the main body is actually possible. And now the front skirts. Now these are not your typical front skirts where there are two ball joints and you can actually separate them. No, this is actually a whole single piece. There is no ball joint here. The only ball joint connection is, is a single ball joint that's connecting this entire part. So, so it does a little bit wiggle and move around, but once again, it doesn't exactly work like a typical front skirt that you would think of. Back skirt is this gigantic piece, no movement at all. And you can see here's the backpack here. You can see how they connect. So as long as you have that piece uh, connect, uh, connected properly, they shouldn't pop out like what happened on mine. All right, on the legs, we get these nice chunky side legs as well. So as I mentioned before, these stickers, uh, you apply the sticker first and then you cover up with a clear piece. So you do get a nice side swivel going on here, very stable and going to the side should be possible, 90 degrees-ish. And then going to the front, uh, make sure that you don't collide too much with other parts. So a little bit less than 90 degrees because how sick the side is. So that's that. And then a nice bend going on here. Not exactly entirely because of the design, but I think uh, 
uh, without if they change the design here it would definitely go more and for those who are wondering yes these are kind of like the clipping type joints but not exactly the same as C clip type joints so C clip type joints where you clip it on and then you cover up that uh, connecting point with another co uh, cover part there's no such thing here you just clip these on and these are actually very stiff so I actually had trouble attaching them uh, because they were stiff uh, on other than that so for the feet wise uh, you can see the bottom section here on the feet has uh, a ball joint oops yeah that's the only part i don't like is that because of the claw feet gimmick you have to attach it like these so uh you can actually do this to make it look like claws basically so that's the way how these are supposed to work but uh the feet itself you can see on the main bottom is on the ball joint so you do get a decent pivot but you can see there's another joint here so you can actually get a very very nice pivot if you ask me and then the lower feet can also move for, uh, backwards like that and f a little bit forward but not much. So that is pretty much it for the articulation. So I think articulation wise they did an excellent job on the kit despite how chunky and thick this is looking. Alright, so we've seen the basics of the unit. I'll be right back with the demonstrations here. Okay, I'm back. So here we have all the stuff I can show you at the point. Uh, so for now, number one here is the claw feed, which according to the man is actually called the shackle claw. And this is actually a wide weapon according to the my anime and uh, manual. I do need to recheck that scene because it was like a very fast paced scene going on there. But still, um, yeah. Uh, the interesting part is that, as I mentioned, you use that le uh, leftover part here to you, you have to first, number one, detach the feet from the ball joint. And then you have to attach this part here and there's going to be a... Uh, a huge peg that connects the uh, hole that goes that was originally the ball joint hole and then you attach the wire here and on the end tip you can see th there's actually another small hole in on the ball joint that is something that I for me at least for me I am experienced for the first time so you attach the wire here and keep in mind that is not enough to hold uh, the feet here so you actually do need an extra action base because there's another hole here on the bottom that you need to attach so just with the wire it is not possible or it's practically impossible for this thing to float on its own so keep that in mind so that's pretty much it and once again you're going to need multiple action bases but once again i i do kind of suggest that you use the according to my mind there's something called the which from mercury the weapon display base which is actually sold separately so it's a, a base and there's multiple like joints like these parts you get multiple bases, action bases, uh, connection points, and uh, various sizes for ports. I highly suggest you do that because number one, uh, the ones that I, I have, that, which are basically for the robot Damashi stands or SHF figure art stands, they mostly work for those figures. But uh, as you can see here now, because these weapons are also supposed to be uh, drones controlled by the AI, and ideally you're, what you're supposed to do is you have, you're supposed to connect to these ports here, not the inside. but most of these action bases that are in from the Tamashii Nation stands are like in this style and there's not enough clearance to actually fit there you can see it can't fit it can't reach the ball joint so uh, whatever that which from Mercury action base set is I highly suggest you do that so yeah you can see I'm using these claws to actually hold the weapons here so it's I'm not going full potential but that's just the way how it is so I do suggest you get that base I'm actually gonna uh, if I can find it on the internet, I am actually going to order one pretty soon at the same time. So that's something I haven't really calculated or even considered as well. And the other thing would be that on the right arm, I gave it the beam kunai separated. And on the right arm here, we have the uh, beam saber connected. So once again, very interesting aspects regarding this. Something we don't see in the uh, Universal Century too often. All right, so I think there's only one thing left to show, and that's just the fully connected spear. And let's see how it holds. So, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So here we have just the regular mode, and with all the parts attached, and with the spear in one one piece. So, once again, it can hold the spear with no problem as well. Although, uh, I, if I had to just be a little bit nitpicky, or some people might point this out in the long run, but once again. Uh, the, sh uh, the spear is a little bit on the slippery side for the handle, so, but once again, the, these, these stuff are kind of an easy fix. I guess you can paint the uh, handle or the inside of the hand, or you can use some sort of other material inside the hand so you can have a much more firmer grip. So, so that is pretty much it. Uh, now, one thing regarding that, another reason why I suggest you buy that Wish for Mercury stand set, which I'm going to do, is that for the shields, these shields are also supposed to be, uh, you should be able to attach them separately, but keep in mind, this is a peg here, so you're, you're going to need another adapter to attach that. So, and most action bases, 
uh, sets don't really come with that. So once again, uh, I think it's going to be a really nice investment for that as well. Anyway, uh, and that is pretty much it for the review. So once again, for the Diary Ball, this is one of the kits I've been lo very looking forward for as well. So I'm very happy and satisfied with the kit, and I would highly recommend those. For those who actually like this this design, like me, I, it's really worth it. I'm going to say it's really worth the kit. I'm going to strongly, uh, you know, uh, suggest this as well. So if they're actually going to go with the full mechanics version, I am all in at the same time. If they go up to Master Grade, that's even better for me. But still... Uh, once again, that's going to be a bit of a long shot, but once again, I really like this kit, which is why I'm very satisfied at the same time. Anyway, thank you for watching the review. This was the review of the HG Dari Ball there from the Wish for Mercury series. If you guys got any questions or requests, leave a comment below. I still have more stuff to buy, build, and, and make reviews out, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.